The shapes you are collecting are not mere toys. They are the sigils of our name. Each brings you closer to eternity. Hello ladies and gentlemen. My name is Penta Hybrid and welcome to the Penta Perspective of The Talos Principle by Crow Team and developed and published rather excuse me by Devolver Digital and may I say that this is by far one of the best games that they've been a part of uh, I've dived into this I've dove rather into this game over the past week after seeing it last year and being very intrigued by it but last year was so swamped with other games and just work and all kinds of other bullshit as you guys might know if you've been following the channel for a while I didn't get a lot of game time in last year and so I'm catching up on a lot of games that I missed out on last year and I figured I'd jump into this one because this was one of the games that I was most intrigued by last year so we can actually show off one of these mechanics real quick. Well, before we jump into what the gameplay is, what is the Talos Principle? Well, <laughs> without spoiling a whole bunch of stuff, the Talos Principle is a philosophical open-world puzzler, much in the way that Myst and Riven before it were, uh, and even modern games such as The Witness. Um, I It's real hard to get into what this game is without spoiling really huge story elements, but there are... This is a new file that I recently started to go back and collect stuff that I missed before because I want to see stuff in the order that it happens, but there is lore upon lore upon lore upon backstory upon backstory upon just the fact that it is a gorgeous game. So real quick, let's run up here and show one of the main parts of it. This game is divided up into puzzles, and if we show you in World 1, which if we go in here, there's this little teleporter. There are individual puzzles within all of these. And I can show you real quick over here. I'm just in World A. World A has seven different worlds in it. Or seven different sections in it. And each of these sections have individual puzzles ranking by difficulty. Green being easier puzzles. Yellow being medium difficulty puzzles. And red puzzles being incredibly complicated puzzles. I have, so far in this new file, 100% completed 1 and 2, and I'm working on 3, but there's a couple of real, real, little hidden secrets. If you can see up in the top part of my HUD, there's each, uh, these little sectioned off bits, you know, the 1, the B, the box, the, uh, the, uh, jammer symbol, all are things that those individual puzzle pieces, as we call them, the Tetronomos, you might know from Tetris, if I collect certain amounts of those pieces, like if I collect enough yellow T's, I'll be able to do the box. I need one more ZT, that's a yellow T, yellow tier T, or yellow tier piece. Uh, the red one up there, I just was exploring in World B, and I happened across a door that needed those four pieces, and I have no idea where I'm going to get those pieces yet, but... Also, there's this hidden door where if you collect golden stars, you can enter in here. And there's these much more complicated puzzles in here that you can do. Which you'll be able to see. I only have two of the ten pieces I need for this. But, yeah, because I had a star, I, if I get all those pieces and another star, I'll be able to open this door. Which I did on my other file, and within that door, it just continues and continues to get more complicated. I'd never opened this thing in my previous file, though. I'm very curious what's in there and where that teleporter leads to. But let's jump over here real quick and we'll show you one of the main mechanics of the game after you do collect the pieces like this is a little jammer device here and if we approach this module we click on it you'll see that we have all of these things that we can do and you can pick up and drag these pieces around however much like a puzzler you actually have to solve oh shit I did it wrong this way. No. I did it wrong again. Like this. And now...
I love these things. These things there just is much that you may learn in the halls of my temples, for there is much that you do not know. That is why you are a child. But children are made to learn, and in time they come to have dominion over the lands of their home. So it shall be with you and your generations. And Elohim's narration is just phenomenal. So what I just unlocked there for my future puzzles is there are different unique in interactions you can do in these puzzles, and I'll show you real quick. Because you can redo puzzles. So here's World 1 in World A, or here's Section 1 in World A. And here it's saying, oh, you got these seven puzzles and one secret you gotta do. Oh, there's a little puzzle door over here. My, my, let's go run in here. Trio Bombastics. And inside of here, it's its own self-contained puzzle. Not connected to anything else. And if you see here, we have these little bombs. If I go too close to them into the red beam of death, they blow my ass up. And it rewinds to the beginning of the puzzle. So how am I going to solve this? I can't run through, can I? Obviously I can't run through. So let's explore a little more. Let's walk around and check things out. And oh, What's this? It's a jammer that I can pick up and do this kind of stuff. I can open these doorways to move them through. And you have to want to do it where they're just far enough apart from each other where they won't interact with you. And they did, because I did it wrong. So now we try again. There we go. This is the way you want to do it. You just run up in here, jam this, and in here would be your Tetronimo. You cannot bring jammers outside with you. They stay inside. So you cannot reuse the same jammer for the puzzle. However, as I'll show you in just a moment here... Where am I going to go? Let's go through here. Because this is into the main hub. Like, these two puzzles were all sectioned off before you go into Elohim's tower. Which... Hilariously enough, you can't see anywhere, and I won't spoil why. In here, we have this computer that you can go on and you can actually look up individual log files, which feel free to read through because they are absolutely fantastic and the lore in the game is deep. But I will show you one of the many secrets that a lot of people struggle with early in the game. Over here, is it this side? No, it's not this side. It's this side. Is it here? Yes, it is. So if you grab this... I believe there's another one. Oops, you just kind of want to do this kind of thing. Where's the second one? There should be a second jammer somewhere. Well, shit. I'm messing the puzzle up already. It's over here. Duh. Pick this up. Double jam this guy, grab your other jammer, jam this guy, pick this up, jam this guy, grab this, and if you could see, I don't know where I am, but there is something beautiful about this place. I will explore and see what I can discover, which is a good idea because there are hidden secrets everywhere. In every little corner that you could see, there's probably a secret somewhere that you can't get to yet. So you can actually take this jammer into your main hub. And I believe... Oh, there's another one over here that you can read. This gives you a little hint. 
All of those little QR codes are hints. And it should be in here. Correct? Nope. It's not in here, is it? Is it in here? No, this is the way back. I'm trying to find it. Oh, it's in here, isn't it? Where? It's in here. Nope, it's not. What the shit? I'm trying. It's been so long since I did this. I'm trying to figure out where that situation is. It's over here. It is in here. But where? Huh. Oh well. It's at the end of the world. Let's actually just go solve a new puzzle for you guys real quick. So we're gonna go in here. Anyway, there is a star in this area that you're gonna have to figure out how to get. And it's not an easy one. But anyway, that's world number one. In here... There's this huge elevator that you can take after unlocking this place. Which we will just briefly show you and not spoil a whole ton of stuff as to what's even deeper in the game. But the game, it, it acts as its own entity where you walk around and you solve puzzles on your own. Each of them, some might say are repetitive, but I feel that they are unique in their own way. And out here, we have World B. World C, World A, each with their own set of puzzles within them. And there we have Elohim's Tower. And I believe it's around the back of B. There's secrets around here. I wish I could wish those islands in a distance, but it seems impossible. You also cannot walk off the map. I'll show you that in a second, but I believe it's... Wait for it. Words and the words made the world. I am the world. <laughs> so cool. Is it behind B? Or is it behind here? There it is. So there's this little satellite radio area back here, secluded that you probably wouldn't see right on your first run through. But in here... ...is just a secret. A star, and a mysterious what's it. What is this what's it? What do you do with this what's it? How do you even behave with it? All questions that you will answer while playing through the game, and all answers are all questions that will just, I won't say blow your mind when they get revealed, but it is, a, it is a pretty heavy philosophical game, but there are some of these really good ones over here. Are they up here? There they are. This is where it starts to get pretty heavy. The voice keeps speaking to me. I can't get it out of my head. What's wrong? It's all wrong. Wait. Listen to me very carefully. I have climbed this tower, and it's no good to come of it. The world is only a world, and Elohim's will continue eternal, and Paradise is banishing all of us from your minds. All who say they made it to the top are blatantly lying, or they wouldn't say they or they would say that they were there. Or they would say what was there. And over here we have a what's it. Another mysterious what's it that Who knows what it does? No one knows what it does until you get there. Also, inside, let's just let's just go in B, for instance, because I have not even gotten to World B in my main file yet. I've gotten almost done with World A. I got I, I was stuck on a couple of puzzles, but in here, you can see up in my top leftmost area, you can see that I have the puzzle here for me to get in here, and I just need a green T, a green angle, a green straight, and a green T. And that's all I need. I can gather those anywhere on the world. That's the best part about this game, is you're able to freely explore at your own will. You don't have to finish all of A and move on to B. So long as you have the pieces, 
you can go to the areas that you need to go. So I can just jump right here as soon as I get those pieces and skip other stuff in A. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to skip. Like, if you go over here... Oh, shit. Make me walk all the way around. You can see... That here I have two green tees that I would easily be able to get. An angle and a straight green. So... I would be able to pretty much go into B before I even complete 6 and 7. It's really cool. So let's go back down. As per usual with my Pension Perspective videos, I'm not going to make it too terribly long of a video. I'm not going to make it like 40 or 50 minutes like my Gungeon videos and... Fallout 4, my Fallout 4 video was like an hour long, but... I just want to give you guys a brief synopsis of the game, show you kind of the quirks and stuff of it. So let's just jump into world... Let's just jump into world 3, seeing as I haven't done much of that on this file. World 3, or er, section 3, has one of the best secrets in the entire game that took me five and a half hours to solve, and it's the clock puzzle. There are all these switches around this pond. I won't tell you how to solve it, but they all are marked down with the 12 hours of the clock. Every single one of them. Or not 12 hours of the clock, it's uh... It goes to 24, am I correct? 12, 13, 14, 15, I think it goes to 23 or 24. 27, 28... Or no, 18, 19, 20... 21, 22, 23, 24. Yep, it's 24. So it's the 24 hours of the clock. That's what I was trying to say. There's also hidden audio logs around the world that you can stumble upon without even, like, even... Figure... Without even... What am I trying... What's the word I'm trying to find here? Without even, like, meaning to. Like, just wandering into a random area. So we're gonna go in here real quick. Locked me up. Swallowed the key. Always want to explore. There's our jammer. You always want to explore when you first go into a puzzle area. And you'll see here, we have this locked door that we cannot get into right now. So we're going to obviously have to find a key to get in there. But, the hilarious part about this puzzle is the key isn't to get in. The key is to get out. I did that wrong. For some reason, I thought he was over the over the archway. So we'll just speed this puzzle up real quick. Without going so fast that you guys get bored. Or motion sick, for that matter. Because the game... I can run this... I'm currently running this game at about 90 frames per second. The game has an... I'll show you the options real quick. If you go to the options, you can see that there are all these different options for, like, motion sickness. Uh, I personally like having my player speed at medium rather than fast. It feels a little better. First person's a little easier than over the shoulders, which you can... I'll show off real quick here. You can see over your shoulders. The third person in this game is kind of hard to move for me because of the frame rate. And I... I it's just... For the style of puzzle game that this is, it feels a lot better doing a first person. View bobbing you can change, so for instance, you can change these all, go back to the game, and you'll you'll see your character kind of bobbing. I don't like having that, so I turn that off, because it, it distracts my eyes. In your graphic options, you can see all of these things. You go to your performance, you can turn all of them to ultra, max FPS at unlimited. So I run this, my field of view is, it changed back to normal. That's why I was getting a little bit of a difference in view. My field of view should be 90. That's so much better. Tricks with jammers. Go into the door. Rejam the door. Grab the other jammer. And your Tetronimo. Look at how pretty it is. Pick it up. Go over yourself a ladder. And now you're out. 
only two pieces left of that puzzle. And the puzzles get super hard. Like, those red pieces don't mess around, and there's a red piece in here. Like, this red angle, these, pe these puzzles don't mess around at all. An escalating problem. Here, I know. those who are worthy may seek the counsel of my blessed messengers. But their wisdom shall not be given easily, for your accomplishments must be your own. So what I just did there is something that if you want 100% completion, you shouldn't do seeking counsel on this. As you can see, I put down my thing, which is what all of these are, are just different people. No messenger will aid you until you have discovered their resting place. Return here and speak to seek, to seek their counsel. So what I have to do now is I actually have to seek out the person that I'm requesting help from. I'm not going to do it because the way that I I like to play this game, there's our red tetronimo up there. The way I like to play this game is... Hold on... Bam. Wait, no. Bam. The way I like to play this game is a little more... by myself. And not because I'm a 100% completionist or anything like that, it's not, not for those reasons. I just personally find doing it myself a lot more fun. And there is a achievement, an achievement rather, if I'm going to grammar correctly, there is an achievement for... Oh, I hated this puzzle. I remember this puzzle now. This one was a pain in the dick when I first did it. Where... I forgot where I had to go for this one. I believe I actually have to go back to the beginning and I have to jump over the wall. So I have to go in here first. Right? To do this puzzle, you actually have to... You have to do some weird stuff. You have to, like... From in here, to finish this puzzle off, from in here, you have to come in here and jam this door. I thought. Maybe not. So I'll throw you up there. Take you. set up. We're gonna forget about this puzzle for now just because I'm gonna sit here and do this for a while on the game but pretty much I just want to show off some some more of the game so let's, let's go in here real quick and we're gonna go to world four which is if I remember correctly this is the hill area right yeah this is the village behold I am Elohim and I speak unto the darkness be gone. Excess data cleared. God, this game is so brilliant. This is the village area. This is... My... F my f in World A, overall, I think World 6 is probably my favorite, but World 4, or Section 4, is by far, like... Just... When I came here, I ran into my first ghost, which is another uh, copy or a memory of another player. Which I don't expect we're going to run into. It's because it's kind of like Dark Souls, when those ghosts run past you in Dark Souls. You don't see them very often, but when you do, it's kind of cool. But World 4, or Section 4, I, I get used to calling them sections, but... Is that one? Nope, that's, that's actually the audio log, so we'll show this off real quick. The answer that came to me again and again was play. Every human society in recorded history has games. We don't just solve problems out of necessity. We do it for fun. Even as adults. Leave a human being alone with a knotted rope, and they will unravel it. Leave a human being alone with blocks, and they will build something. Games are part of what makes us human. 
We see the world as a mystery, a puzzle, because we've always been a species of problem solvers. There's a ton of those. There are a ton of those, of course, you might expect. There's a completionist achievement for collecting all of them and listening to all of them by Alexandra. And some of them are pretty well hidden. Some of them are hidden behind puzzles, some of them are hidden in the environment that makes you explore, which I love. I love that aspect of not forcing the exploration of the game, but it, it, uh, encouraging it. Making you feel... Oh, shit. Making you feel like the world is more than just some large area for you to run around and do puzzles in. It's actually a living, breathing mystery that you have to figure out and... Just makes you feel... Makes you feel a lot smaller than you really are. Even if you are just an AI robot. Ah, oh, Talos Principle, guys. Directive, narrative, uh, game direction, graphical, fidelity. Oh, here's the laser puzzles. These are the things I just unlocked. So if you take this, I can do... I have to go... Right here, right? this. I believe this. Hell yeah! I remember now. It's puzzles like these. Where it's, it's unlike the witness, and I'm not gonna throw shade or anything at the witness here, but it's unlike the witness in the fact that it's not just line puzzles. There's all different kinds of puzzles in this game. So we go in here. It'll tell you exactly what style of puzzle we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna be dealing with more of these connectors. So we're going to need to do... This. We're going to need to do... And now we can go back, and we can unlock the crate. Which we will do very, very briefly here. Should be back here.
Taylor's principle, ladies and gentlemen. I thoroughly, thoroughly suggest you pick this game up. As it is probably one of the best first person puzzler games. With an option of third person that I've played since Mist. And there are no bad things I can say about this game other than some of the puzzles are a little too easy, even once you get into some of the later parts of A, but that's only because I haven't gotten very far in the game. If we're, if we're counting A, B, C, and maybe even Elohim's Tower as quarters of the game, I'm only about a quarter way through the game. But even feeling that I'm a quarter way through the game, I can feel that the difficulty is going to spike up because there are some viciously difficult ones that really, really melt your brain when you're trying to solve them, but... Otherwise, I, I think this is one of the best games I've played in a long time, and I, I'm very sore that I missed it last year, but I'm very happy that I was able to pick it up. It was just on sale. It may still be on sale when this video goes up. I don't know. If it isn't, it's still worth the $30 it's charging because it's a $30 game experience that will stick with you for a while and you'll get your hours out of it considering some of the difficulty of the puzzles uh, the narrative the gorgeous graphics the smooth and fun engaging gameplay on a PC it is available on PS4 I feel like I should mention that as well it's available on PS4 as well so if you're a PS4 owner I suggest that you get it on there as well but uh, I think the optimal and I might sound like a PC snob here I think the optimal way to play it is keyboard and mouse on a PC because the way that it runs right now at damn near 100 FPS and it looks feels and just controls stupendously so we're gonna run and we're gonna show you a quick world six before we get out of here because this is probably my favorite area in the whole game these worlds and we within them are made of words hidden words invisible to you yet part of all things we are a story. Your actions give life to the story, and the story gives meaning to your life. Thank you guys so much for watching my Penta Perspective on Talos Principle. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did. Comment down below letting me know if you played this game, if you plan on playing it, and if you did, what did you think of it? As always, guys, my name is Penta Harvard, and I will catch you later.